Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. Hopefully the clips at the beginning was a little taste of what this build has to offer. It only gets better and better. I could only play on this build for about 8 hours yesterday and a little bit today. I do have a lot more clips, but um, I think you guys kind of get the point. So, before we get into the bread and butter guys, a huge shout out to my patrons and also my community members. I think we're going to go with the name the Crux Clan. I don't know, let me know down in the comments if you guys have any more suggestions of what to call the YouTube community members. Now this is a pretty meta-licious um, army build. Um, it's pretty similar to my last Necromancer build I had last patch. I just changed some of the skills around and I'll explain that. And pardon me if I'm going quick, I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes so I'm not wasting your guys' time. So also PVP top five, guys, please send me your clips. I need your PVP five clips. And if you want to help support the channel, please eviscerate the like and subscribe button, please. Also have a Patreon, <laughs> wink, wink. Character sheet, here's everything, uh, completely unbuffed. And yeah, we'll just quickly buff everything up. Uh, yeah, something like this. So you're looking at uh, 4,300 spell damage. This goes up to around 5K with continuous attack. Spell penetration, this only goes higher with our sets that we're running. Spell grids, uh, well, critical resist at 2K. Magic recovery, uh, it's it's kind of too high, to be honest. Um, we are a Breton. Um, I'm not running Vampire on this build. I think Vampire is best in slot, so please, if you're running Breton, please run Vampire Stage 3, running Bewitch Sugar Skulls, running the Atro. Um, if you do decide to run Vampire, keep the Atro, but if you're going to run Breton and not run Vampire, you need a way with putting on the Lady or whatever Mundus of your choosing. So, let's get into the gear quickly. Don't waste your guys' time running Lightning Staff and Dark Convergence. This boot bolsters our AoE damage by 10%. We have a sharpened trait with a shock damage enchantment. And guys, we are not using this for the damage. Don't laugh, right? Dark Convergence is still kind of decent on the Magic Necromancer every, else every other class. Not so much. We're just using this for the pool effect just so it's so much easier to land your Harmony combo. Because I've tried to not run DC and I messed it up so many times. Just so many. Just disheartening, to be honest. Maybe I'm just bad at the class, but I could not consistently land my my harmony burst. So I'm running DC because it's a crutch, and well, I need it, right? Also, speaking of crutch sets, we're running Iron Blood as well. This blows the tankiness factor out of the roof. You have so much mitigation. You have 10% from your ghost. We'll go over. You have 30% from. Iron Blood, if you want to run Vampire, you have the Undeath passive, that's more mitigation. Speaking of mitigation, I will be doing a mitigation video either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week um, to show you guys how it stacks and the diminishing turns thereof. If you guys are interested in that, please hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified before anyone else. So we're running Battle Orgs for our other sets. I'll go over the traits and all that in just a minute. Um, defending, you can run Powered, Weapon Damage Enchantment on the uh, Resto Staff, Battle Orgs. Our armor weights are 5 light, 1 medium, and 1 heavy just to maximize our undaunted passive. I like having the, uh, the, the spell penetration and as, as well as the, uh, the cost reduction for running light armor. You're tanky enough as is, uh, you don't need to run any more heavy. So 5 one, one for that. Battle Orgs, if you guys do not know what it does, whenever you cast your ultimate, you get a metric shit ton of spell damage and also spell penetration for your burst. Um, your ultimate is everything, that is your entire burst. I did tailor this build to have more consistent damage compared to my last build back in Blackwood, just so you're not stuck in your back bar, just turtling up until your next ultimate. You can potentially kill people even without your ultimate. So uh, run impen and well fitted on your pieces. I like to roll dodge a lot, you guys know me. I have prismatic enchantments on the big pieces to get our health flow around 28k. On the jewelry, we have all spell damage, all harmony. Um, this is pretty much essential. Now I have Malakath here. We do have a pretty high crit, especially with the Necromancer crits when you drop below 25% health. I think you get on this build up to 12 or 16 extra percent crit chance. So um, it might be better to not run Malakath. I'll let you guys choose whatever mythic item you want to run. But right now I'm running Malakath just because it's more consistent. And I wasn't seeing a lot of crits. Um, to be honest, during my playtesting, so I just slapped on Malakanth and it performs amazingly well anyway. So that's the set very quickly. Um, front bar, we're not running any other AoEs like Mystic Siphon or the Totem um, because it does proc uh, DC uh, when you don't want it to. So to avoid that, we removed all AoEs off our front bar besides Avid Boneyard. So we have Ellie Drain, 
Uh, stalking Blast Bones hits like a Mack truck, <laughs> as Deltia would say. Um, Skeletal Arcana, so this is surprising. It does AoE damage. Um, this does help your burst a lot, actually. It's not too bad. Um, you can laugh at it all you want. This is, again, like more of a flex spot, but this does offer a lot of sustained pressure in your, you know, kind of neutral game engagements. So next is your spammable. You can run LAE weapon here. You run Force Pulse. If you're solo, I highly suggest running Force Pulse. If you are in a group, I almost 100% recommend Pulsar because it does about the same amount of damage. It inflicts people with minor mangle, reducing their health by 10%. And then it does more damage for everyone that's in it. You know, DC pulls, you know, five, ten people. Uh, this stacks uh, pretty high, so um, Pulsar is definitely a way to go if you're in a two-man group. Speaking of two-man groups, if you run in two-man group or higher, you need to synergize classes that have a lot of synergies um, because you can activate their synergies and do a shit ton of damage. Like the Dragonite, for example, a Talons. You can activate their Talons and hit people for 10, 12k. In BGs, I was hitting t people for 10k Talons. And there's no cooldown on that, so... Um, we have... Avid Boneyard, you want to set this up for your burst combo. Um, this is the morph that you need because you have to act activate your own synergy in order to do so. And then we have Dawnbreaker or Smiting. So this gives us a little bit of uh, spell damage as well. Acts as a stun in case we need it. And it lines up really well with our burst combo. We get Spirit Guardian. This reduces... All your damage by 10%, that's why Necromancers are so tanky. Resistant Flesh, again, it heals you and bolsters your defenses. Rapid Regeneration, because we're running a Restoration Staff. If you're running Sword and Board, this is a flex spot for you guys. You can use whatever you want. Summoner's Armor. And then we have Mortal Coil, this is like a pseudo Rapid Regen. It's free to cast. And then Pestilent Colossus, for those huge groups that you just have to delete. I get impatient and just want to spam out Dawnbreakers. Um, yeah, so... I rarely make it to the Colossus, but it is here for that. If you want to get really crazy and really um, toxic, you can run Anime Blast Bones. Guys on stream, I don't know if he was there for it. I got hit by this. I get hit for 17k Blast Bones. This ultimate is pretty nutty if you know how to use it. Um, I've tried it a little bit. It does cost a shit ton. And that's good because we're using Battle Wargs because you're gonna get all the extra spell damage and spell penetration. If you can land this, you're going to delete anyone. I don't care who it is. You're going to delete tanks with this. If they don't see it coming, like if they don't block literally every single blast bone, they're going to hit with four of them. Okay. Four blast bones. Okay. Synergy proc. That's a lot of damage. It, I got deleted on stream. I couldn't believe it. So um, definitely something to consider if you guys uh, just want something kind of trolly. So anyway, there's that. Champion points. We have Fighting Aura, Master at Arms, we have Ironclad, and then since we don't, we're stacking all spell damage, but since we're rocking Harmony traits, we don't have as much spell damage as I would like for the healing, so I'm running Focus Minning to kind of offset that. So now into the red tree, we have the Trifecta, we have Relentless, Relentlessness giving you major protection, sustained by suffering, giving you that magic recovery and stamina recovery and health recovery as well. And then Pain's Refuge, uh, further stacking on top of our already insurmountable damage mitigation. And then we have Survival Instincts. So, um, that pretty much does it. I didn't go over the green tree just because, you know, green tree is green tree. There's really not benefits of that. Um, that pretty much does it for the build guide. I try to keep it nice, short, and sweet. Again, if you have any PvP top 5 clips, please submit them to horcruxeso at yahoo.com or just drop them in the Discord, which is probably easier. Um, if you guys want to see more content like this, you know, obviously like and sub, and I will have a dot build for you guys sometime later on this week. So stick around for that. Um, this has been Horcrux. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.